Hi, and welcome to A Critical Dragon, where I talk about narrative in film, television, and books. Uh, today's video is going to be a, a brief analysis of the opening paragraph of the prologue of the first book of Stephen Erickson's uh, Malazan Book of the Fallen. So this is the, the opening paragraph of the prologue from Gardens of the Moon. Straight off the bat, no spoilers, I'm not spoiling anything here. This is a look at how Erickson embeds a lot of information in the language that the reader can access. And I hope it's going to explain why uh, when people refer to the Malazan Book of the Fallen as complex, they don't mean complex as in this is really hard. They mean complex as in there's a lot of information here that you don't necessarily pick up on the very first time you read it. And it's one of the reasons why I think at least a lot of readers greatly enjoy a second read of the novel, a reread, because suddenly a lot of this information becomes far more evident and far more obvious to them now that we all understand the context in which this information appears. So straight off the bat, there are no spoilers here. This is not going to ruin the book for you in any way. This is a straightforward analysis of the very opening paragraph of the prologue. I'm not even going into other scenes within the prologue, it's just this very first paragraph. So, the stains of rust seem to map blood seas on the black pocked surface of Mox Vein. A century old, it squatted on the point of an old pike that had been bolted to the outer top of the hole's wall. Monstrous and misshapen, it had been cold hammered into the form of a winged demon, teeth bared in a leering grin and was tugged and buffeted in squealing protest with every gust of wind. There you have it. Three sentences at the very beginning of the book. Why then do I think that this is important? Well, just before this, where it's a, between where it says prologue and where the, the first sentence begins, we're given a couple of dates. And one of these dates is that this scene, this image, this opening of the book occurs in the 96th year of the emperor's reign. And the start of the second sentence is about this weather vane being a century old. So there's an almost direct connection between the age of the empire under this emperor and the weather vane. We're also told, and this information is on the, the back of the book, that Malaz Island and Malaz City, well, depending on your edition, but Malaz Island was the center of the Malazan Empire. And Mox Vein, on top of Mox Hold, at the center of Malaz City, which is the capital of Malaz Island, which was the capital of the Malazan Empire, we're getting a sense here that this weather vane is a direct symbol of the empire itself. It's the same age as the empire. It's in a position of prominence for the empire. So we can read this weather vane as a symbol for the empire itself. And the first thing that strikes you about all of this visual description of the weather vane is that it is almost entirely pejorative and negative and ominous, which uh, in some ways sets the tone for how we are, how we can think about the empire. So let's break this down a bit. This, there are stains of rust on a pocked surface. It's so the very first thing that we're told about this weather vane, which I'm now going to read as a symbol for the empire is that it is stained and rusty and pitted, that it hasn't been looked after, it hasn't been maintained, it hasn't been uh, polished and cared for, that there's an element of neglect to what is happening 
to this weather vane and therefore to the empire that it is being exposed to the elements and no one is taking care of it. Secondly, it's squatted on the point of an old pike. So we know that if the weather vane is a symbol for the empire, the empire is balanced on the top of a weapon, pointed weapon, which in some respects we could read as being slightly precarious, but another way of reading this is that this empire, the foundation of this empire is military, is a weapon, is conquest, because this has been bolted to the outer top of the whole wall, that this has been inserted on top of pre-existing structures, that the empire has militarily colonized and stolen and invaded other countries and city-states and territories. And all of this is on the basis of a pike, on the basis of weaponry, on the basis of military um, intervention. So then the next point, it's monstrous and misshapen. It's in the shape of a demon and its teeth are bared in a leering grin. So we get an immediate sense that this is ominous, it's demonic, it is predatory, and it is not welcoming in any way. It's a leering grin that makes you feel that you are prey to it. And if this is a symbol for the empire, the empire views the world as something to be consumed, something to be conquered. So again, this is just a simple symbolic reading of what's in the text. And then we think about it in terms of the very first sentence, that the rust was a map of blood seas. And we think the Malazan Empire was originally a naval empire. The soldiers we read about are marines. So the blood seas here are again a direct allusion to the naval backbone of Malazan um, expansion and the Malazan conquering military forces. So another connection between the weather vane and the Malazan Empire itself. And we then take the term cold hammered, cold hammered into the form of a winged demon. This isn't forged. This, there isn't an idea of positive creation here. This is an idea of being beaten into submission, being beaten and violently shaped into something demonic. Um, so again, this is not positive imagery about what the empire is. And then one last point, just on taking this language apart. The weather vane uh, is tugged and buffeted in squealing protest with every gust of wind. We talk about how uh, the winds of change or the winds of chance or what way is the wind blowing, meaning is it going to be a positive outcome or a negative outcome? Here we have the empire is buffeted by wind, by change, by these external forces. But every step of the way, the empire resists changing direction. Although there are these external forces that are tugging it and buffeting it, it squeals in protest when the wind tries to move it from its chosen position and its chosen direction. Which gives a sense of any empire, if you think about it, when we try to change a cultural institution, when we try to change something that is well established, we resist change. And so the Malazan Empire is no exception to this. So that is just a, a very brief look at breaking out the language and having a look at why this depth of information is contained in the language in a lot of these descriptions all the way through the novel and that when we read uh, when we read through uh, gardens of the moon for the first time quite often we don't realize 
how important this information is and why it is there. Um, things that appear superficial, things that appear as mere decoration, suddenly take on a deeper meaning and a deeper understanding. So I hope you enjoyed that very brief look at some uh, language analysis in Gardens of the Moon. And I will see you in the next one.